Well, hi everyone. I promised to give you an update if any new developments occurred for the Millennium Tower building. I didn't really expect to do another video uh, anytime soon, if at all, quite frankly. But then I received an email yesterday from the public relations firm who apparently represents the owners of the units of the Millennium Tower building. And uh, they objected to my most recent video that was done back in October that utilized satellite INSAR data that was produced by Value Space, a very reputable firm that does this satellite data analysis on a routine basis. And, uh, you know, compare that data to the instrumentation data for the building. And I'll go through this letter and essentially give you an overview of this situation. And I'm just curious what you all think about it. So let's just go through this letter a little bit. It says, we are writing on behalf of the Millennium Tower in San Francisco. As the residence's public relations firm, we are tasked with alerting creators about important updates about the building. So they mentioned that video with INSAR data that I did back in October. And then they recap the work that was done. Please be aware that as of July 1st, 2023, all structural work related to Millennium Towers Voluntary seismic upgrade and foundation stabilization has been completed. Well, nobody's disputed that. World-renowned engineers and construction experts collaborated on the building's retrofit, a once-in-a-lifetime project that pioneered the implementation of innovative engineering technique called underpinning. Underpinning's been around for a very, very long time. They didn't invent it for the Millennium Tower. Although I will say I don't know that a building of this size had been underpinned or attempted to be underpinned before. But certainly the underpinning has been around for a long time. And they said, because your video continues to portray the building as damaged, we are writing to make you aware of the change in circumstance and hope you will remove any inaccurate content from YouTube and refrain from portraying the Millennium Tower as being damaged in future works. Well, I didn't say it was damaged. I mean, there have been reports about uh, cracked foundation slabs and uh, other engineers, which I'll mention, have raise serious concerns, people who are registered uh, as a geotechnical engineer or structural engineer in the state of California have raised these objections publicly in written letters to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. I, I don't know what they're talking about saying, that, you know, continuing to portray the building as damaged. And then they say I make false claims. They don't, they don't indicate what they're objecting to. They additionally, your video makes false unfounded claims regarding the Millennium Tower status based on unverified third party satellite data. Well, I made it clear in that previous video that this data, this analysis came from value space, not me. I just compared the data trends that they developed with those from the instrumentation data that was posted on the city of San Francisco website. And then we get down to it here. Inaccurate media coverage has significantly distorted perceptions about the Millennium Tower. I mean, they've been complaining about media coverage, they being the engineer for this retrofit that they implemented. Talk about home to a thousand people, and they live there because of the building's luxury amenities and world-class design. And I also pointed out in this uh, previous video that the movements have largely stopped. They, they continue to creep along and goes on to say, we request that you refrain from referring to the building as sinking or damaged in future videos. I don't recall using either one of those terms. Uh, the building has certainly settled and there has reportedly been cracks in the foundation. The residents of the building appreciate your considerations, so on and so forth. Oh, and I accidentally skipped this part over here, a couple of paragraphs up. We ask that you remove this content within 30 days of receiving this letter. And then they close with failure to comply with these reasonable requests will require the Millennium Tower Association to pursue further actions. So let's just review briefly what I talked about before. So this is a representation of data points from the INSAR satellite analysis that was performed by Value Space. And they produced these plots. As I pointed out in the previous video, these plots were for a three year period, for a period that preceded and followed the upgrade work that they completed in 2023. Just a close in view of that plot. So I took those plots and went to the monitoring reports posted on the city of San Francisco website. And I noticed that the overall data trends 
from their instrumentation data for the building had a good correlation with the satellite data. The difference between the last two points on the right of this plot, th these are settlement points on the building foundation, you can see most of them still have a slight downturn, which means that although the magnitude is quite low, there's still settlement occurring. And this was between July 2024 and October 2024. But if you look at the contours, of the differential settlement that they started measuring uh, from the time that they implemented this uh, retrofit work, you can see that uh, there's very little change overall, but there's definitely a trend from having less differential settlement to the southeast side of the building to more differential settlement on the northwest side of the building. So let's just play a couple of these segments from the previous video. So I'm going to show you the settlement data that we have from radar images at the top of the Millennium Tower building and present that to you here today and compare it to the data that's in their periodic monitoring reports that they published on the uh, building department's website in San Francisco. So their plot is from the period of May 2021 to May 2024. So they selected a three-year window. What I like about this is this is completely independent data. We're not relying on the consultant or the city of San Francisco to say what's going on here. Images here were generated from a good quality data set according to value space. So again, there's very strong correlation with what we're seeing from the data report here for this building. So I think it's a very exciting technology. And of course, I'll continue to bring you updates about the Millennium Tower. Again, it's an ongoing saga, but uh, I think the people involved with this building are going to great lengths to try and keep their building out of the news. So. That was prescient, I think, saying that they're trying to just keep this building out of the news. Not only that, it appears that they're trying to scrub the internet of any content that they object to relative to trying to improve or stabilize property values, which I, I'm sympathetic to that. But it doesn't change the fact that this building has a history of issues. The representative for the buildings and the design engineer for the retrofit indicate that they're happy with the work and that things are stable. And also there's people, uh, registered engineers in structural or geotechnical engineering have raised concerns that still haven't been addressed relative to the integrity of that 10 foot thick con reinforced concrete foundation mat, as well as the irregular support of this foundation having underpinning on two sides of the building and just the original piling throughout the rest of the building and how that heterogeneity uh, may not perform very well uh, during a major earthquake event. Again, these are concerns that have been raised by others. And certainly there's been local media there in San Francisco that's had a tremendous number of views and have posted many, many stories about the situation in the past with the Millennium Tower. This one's from 11 months ago from NBC Bay Area. I'm just gonna play a quick segment of that. Well, more trouble for the troubled Millennium Tower. It's been six months since the luxury high rise was fully supported to stop it from sinking and leaning. Now, that project was hailed as an immediate success, but NBC investigative reporter Jackson Vanderbrecken has learned that the high rise is no longer sinking any further to the side, but now it appears to be sinking in the middle. Then there was also, from I believe seven years ago, a CBS 60 Minutes segment on the Millennium Tower. I'm just going to play a short segment here. In initially, no buyer's remorse. No, Absolutely. not at all. I mean, in fact, buyer euphoria. One feature the Dodsons hadn't counted on. These devices are what? They're stress gauges. Dozens of stress gauges dot the walls of the Millennium Tower's basement. They measure in millimeters the slow growth of cracks along the columns that rise up from the building's foundation. And just to illustrate that this satellite data is provided to me independently and we take an objective approach in, in looking at the data. Uh, a while back, I did a video with uh, value space supplied analysis for points throughout Three Gorges Dam in China. And of course, a lot of people have expressed concerns about the stability of Three Gorges Dam. And what we found out from the INSAR data is it shows that everything's stable. And uh, initially you think that's a nothing to see here video, so why post it? But again, if we, I wanna be data driven on this channel 
And uh, it turned out that that video has a tremendous reception. It's gotten 675,000 views in a handful of months. So, uh, so far the most popular video on the channel that basically says the satellite data shows everything's in, in good shape overall. Now, I'm not sure what the issue is about verification of the satellite data. Fact is, anybody can go out to the European Space Agency website and download a, a host of satellite data for their own analysis, including this INSAR data, but it really requires analysis by people like Value Space who are experienced in not only the data collection, but particularly the analysis and, and vetting what's reasonable versus what may not be reasonable. So a couple of days ago, actually, I'm recording this video on January 29th, 2025, there was a story about a penthouse unit, the grand penthouse at Millennium Tower, selling for $9 million, which was millions of dollars less than the original asking price, apparently. Looks like a spectacular view of the city. The summary of that unit is this impressive 5,000 square foot, two bedroom, two and a half bath unit, known as the Grand Penthouse, is on the 60th floor. Here's a quote from the selling agent with Sotheby's for this unit. People that are in the know know what the building is. Selling agent Greg Glenn with Sotheby's International Realty told KTVU. It's one of the most dramatic condominiums in all of downtown San Francisco with the best views. And this story, and I've got a link to this story uh, posted in the description for this video, talks about the backstory of when apparently information about this excess settlement, excess in what versus what was originally calculated for this building, broke in 2016. And this building was constructed in the early 2000s, and as early as 2009, the engineers involved with the project realized that settlement of the foundation had exceeded significantly their original predictions. As I recall, around 2009, they had around nine inches of settlement, and they were originally predicting no more than around five inches of total settlement for the 40 plus year lifetime plan for the building. And then the settlement continued to occur for the years after 2009. And again, they implemented this uh, underpinning measure in 2023. So quoting this agent again, the property was purchased in 2016 for $13 million. It was listed in May of 2023 and remained on the market through the part of last year. There was a lot of interest, but no offers, Lynn said. So it was taken off the market for a period of time before it sold privately last fall. It just closed escrow on the 15th. Multiple offers were received. The luxury real estate expert also stressed another indicator signaling a rebound. As the buyer secured a $5 million loan, it marks the return of mortgages to Millennium Tower, which have not been available for many years, Lynn explained. And then he lists the reasons here for why the sales price was lower than the asking price or even the purchase price from a few years ago. It talks about downtown decline. In recent years, the downtown area has been plagued with vacant storefronts with many businesses closing shop and leaving. Retailers have pointed to theft and other crime as a driving factor. So if that's the narrative that, you know, this underpinning is successful, certainly the settlement readings show decreasing rates of movement, so less settlement over time as indicated in these reports posted on the city of San Francisco website. And so if the decline in real estate prices uh, for Millennium Tower in this particular unit is related to just the overall climate in San Francisco in terms of business uh, closings, uh, crime, and uh, homelessness, things like that that's been widely reported, why are the homeowners here engaging a public relations firm to try and apparently get creators who have done content about Millennium Tower to remove their videos. And I think the heart of this may be the fact that in general, if somebody's trying to portray a certain narrative, they may not like outsiders who may have independent information or independent views of things uh, weighing in. So again, I'll mention that uh, geotechnical engineer Lawrence Karp, I believe he has nearly 50 years of experience or maybe more as an engineer, a geotechnical engineer. He has a trove of information related to Millennium Tower posted on a website. And again, I've got a link to that website in the description to this video. He and an associate, which is uh, structural engineer Josh Carden, 
issued two letters to the City and County of San Francisco Board of Supervisors. They raised serious objections to the planned implementation of the perimeter piling underpinning versus having, say, micropile distributed uniformly throughout the footprint of the building foundation slab. They also objected to this review panel that was engaged by the city. So the point is, it may be that if somebody has sincere and data-based uh, observations or concerns about a situation, I think it's in the public interest uh, from a journalistic standpoint to uh, raise these points. And knowing full well, uh, other people may not agree and may have strong feelings uh, against uh, such presentations. But attempting to essentially scrub the internet of such content, I think is in all likelihood just gonna generate even more uh, unwanted attention. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank those of you who've contributed to buy me a coffee. I opened that up a couple of months ago and, and many of you contributed. I really appreciate that. I also want to send a shout out to the channel members. That's an excellent way to also support the channel as well as those of you who provided super thanks. So thanks very much everyone and please stay tuned for future videos.